How do you explain this, this, this apparent paradox between the fact you've got growing anti-EU sentiment and seemingly um, uh, even very populist parties becoming much more moderate on the EU? Maybe Alessandra first. Well, there's been a compromise on both sides, I think. Uh, the e EU and EU institutions in general, I think to some extent have realized that their um, policies are not sustainable in the long term if they want to survive. And this is true both in terms of economics um, with the Eurozone crisis, uh, they realized that um, you know this, this uh, wealth gap or the, this monetary union without any kind of fiscal union is not going to work in the long term. You have these huge losses for Southern European countries especially Italy, was, uh, its economy was doing better before joining the Euro. Um, and then you have these huge gains for countries like Germany. So they realized that they need to deepen the union, which means not make, making many Northern European countries happy because they have to, you know, give up a larger portion of um, their tax money mm. to support this, this unionization. Um, but also they, I think they also realized that in terms of immigration, that if they continue on this, on this route, it's, it's not going to serve their interests well. Um, and likewise, on the other hand, you have populist parties like in Italy as the Five Star Movement or the League that have realized that their position on the Euro is a very risky one. They're not willing to take that responsibility of a possible exit from the Eurozone. Uh, remember, we had Brexit, but that wasn't an exit from the Eurozone. They were never part of the co common currency, which makes things much more complicated and, and difficult. I, I, I think that the Euro is an important part of it. I, I, I do think that I, I am not as sure as you are that that these parties are softening towards um, hmm. you. I mean, if we look at the political crisis of 2019, that led to the formation of the second Conti government. I mean, it didn't happen because the right-wing populists were getting less popular. It, it, it happened because the first, Con you, you could call it the Conti government, but it was actually the De Maio Salvini government. It was actually a, a sort of like a, a, a sort of twin government between the, the Five Star and, and, and the League. Th that government was, probably as popular as any that Italy has had since the Second World War. It fell not because it was doing badly, but because it was doing so well. And, and Salvini was doing so well as the perceived head of it that the polls were showing that he could, were elections called, take an absolute majority in both chambers for, 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 for the league, which would be an extraordinary amount of power for mm. any politician in Italy. And what happened is that Salvini underestimated the political astuteness of, of his partisan adversaries who were able to put together this impossible looking coalition, which was the Democratic Party and the Five Star, which was a, which was a party that was explicitly founded to undermine the Democratic Party. Um, so Salvini was, he was not repudiated in the public. He was maneuvered out of his position of advantage. And there's really no reason to believe that the public has changed its mind. Um, so that's, that is Georgia Maloney's estimation, that the, that the payoff in the end will come to um, the person who has really kept the faith uh, uh, you know, against immigration and against Europe. And Salvini's bet is there's really no way to uh, uh, get elections, at least before the next presidential election, which is in another year or so. Um, and so you might as well wait, keep your position of power, maybe get a, a seat or two in the government and, and continue that way. At least that's what it looks like Salvini is doing. 